This solar heater is several dozen times cheaper than these well-known solar collectors, and this is one of my experiments when the sun heated 70 liters of water to a temperature of almost 58 degrees Celsius when the ambient temperature was 26 degrees, and the angle of the sun above the horizon was less than 60 degrees. But now the sun above the horizon is a few degrees higher, and the ambient temperature is 31 degrees Celsius and thus the heating temperature of the water was 65 degrees. This is a relative of my solar heater which consists of this wooden frame, these sheets of expanded polystyrene, and this polymer sleeve for water, and this heater was described by me over a year ago. However this old solar heater has many drawbacks that can be eliminated if the polymer sleeve is covered with this steel sheet which distinguishes this new solar heater from the old heater. For example, now I want to see damages to the polymer sleeve due to the cat's claws, but unfortunately the cat did not want to go to the sleeve. However here we see traces of a small dog on the surface of the steel sheet, and we understand that the steel sheet will protect my solar heater against the claws of cats and dogs, against claws and beaks of birds, against hail, falling of various things and other damages. In addition, we know that solar radiation reduces the lifespan of this polymer sleeve, and therefore we must periodically replace it, but it is obvious that this steel sheet will protect the sleeve against the radiation. In addition, my old solar heater can be in this situation after a strong wind, and this fact is another argument for covering this polymer sleeve with its steel sheet. This is my old solar heater after rain. And it is obvious that we must take a brush or a rag to push this water off the black surface of the heater, and this water will go away together with dirt. At the same time, the steel sheet of my solar heater has a convex shape, and therefore water quickly leaves the surface of the sheet together with the dirt. In addition, we see that the sun and the hot sheet quickly dry out the remaining water on the black surface and the steel sheet will be dry in a few minutes. I washed this steel sheet about a month ago, and I just washed this little zone. A comparison of this zone and the rest of the steel sheet leads us to the conclusion that the sheet accumulates little dirt during one month of the Ukrainian summer, but we can see an economic sense of washing the solar heater approximately once a year. This is air bubbles which can form above the water of my old solar heater. Although now we see that removing the bubbles is simple and quick action. This pattern is perfectly horizontal, and it shows us that my new solar heater is installed with a small slope when this side is located a few centimeters lower than this side, and therefore the air bubbles can automatically leave the solar heater in this direction. So, my new solar heater has easier maintenance than my old heater, but the new heater is more expensive. And this is list of its materials where these materials of the old solar heater are complemented by this steel sheet and some other materials. We can calculate that it is about $8 per square meter of the steel sheet, and it is almost 10 times cheaper than the prices of these unglazed solar collectors. This is my reminder that traditional solar collectors require expensive and labor-intensive fixation on the ground or roof. At the same time, our solar heater has no fixation, and a strong wind is not a problem due to the horizontal position of the heater and due to the large weight of its water. So, these solar heaters are interesting for solar stations on horizontal roofs, and our heaters will not damage the hermetic roof covering with the fixation, and we can temporarily remove them for a repair their roof. In addition, our solar heaters may be interesting to place here between rows of efficient solar collectors, where this short shadow does not cover our solar heaters from April to September, and therefore they can produce heat with temperatures up to 40 or 60 degrees Celsius. Perhaps you think that this solar heater may be interesting for your single-family house, for example, for its hot water supply or pool water heating, however my YouTube channel will describe more interesting solar heaters for a single-family house in the coming months and years. In addition, we must understand that this solar heater will work poorly in winter due to the small height of the sun above the horizon, although we can improve the heater capabilities by transparent coverings and possibly by a selective coating instead of the cheap black paint of this steel sheet.
or using reflective surfaces or similar black superstructures which make my solar heater work well on winter when the sun is low over the horizon. However this video will only describe this simple version without any transparent coverings and black or reflective superstructures. This table describes the annual heat production from one square meter of our solar heater and the cost of our heat for different temperatures in the United States, Europe, and India, and I calculated the cost of the heat on the basis of this cost of capital and labor. These are the cases when the cost of our solar heat is approximately one and a half times cheaper than the cost of heat from natural gas, and we see that they correspond to the water temperatures of 45 or 65 degrees Celsius. However a decrease in the water temperature significantly increases the annual production of our heat, and therefore its cost decreases, and these are the cases when our solar heat is about 8 times cheaper than heat from natural gas. But we must understand the main share of this heat is produced in summer, and these cases do not have the heat production in winter. However the maximum of the production in India is spring and autumn. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat. This old solar heater was described by these two of my videos over a year ago, and I remind you that its construction begins with the laying of these beams, and then I install these sections which are fixed to the beams with screws. These sections are made of expanded polystyrene and wooden battens which are fixed by polyurethane foam. So, the construction of the solar heater continues. And I install these wooden walls and put the black polyethylene sleeve for water, and the construction ends with the installation of these wooden pieces under each edge of each beam. But our new solar heater will be more complex, and we have to add these wooden boards which are fixed to the battens of the sections with screws. Obviously, the boards are needed to install the steel sheet with the help of these screws and I recommend an interval of about 30 centimeters between adjacent screws. In addition, I installed these black stripes which protect the edges of my polymer sleeve from solar radiation. And I installed several black stripes to increase their replacement period to several years. The upper edges of the black stripes are fixed by these staples, and they help the edges of that sleeve resist the pressure of the water. We can also notice that this wall is a wooden board where I will install this water outlet. And the walls need these triangles. I want to clarify that I used ordinary straight steel sheet, but it becomes convex due to the pressure of the water which fills my solar heater. And we understand that the curvature of the steel sheet will be greater if we increase the width of the sheet, or if we reduce its thickness. Those beams may have similar additional wooden parts which are not compulsory, but they make the bottom of the solar heater so round, and therefore the volume of its water decreases, and now the average height of the water inside the solar heater is about 4 cm, but my steel sheet is 100 cm wide and 250 microns thick. In addition, this interval between adjacent battens should be less compared to the old solar heater because the height of the water inside the new heater will be greater. The new solar heater can use a cheaper polymer sleeve compared to the old heater because the sleeve of the new heater is protected against solar radiation, animals and hail. In addition, the color of the sleeve can be any. But on the other hand, the polymer sleeve of the new heater must have a long lifespan because replacing the sleeve is more labor intensive than for the old solar heater. Unfortunately, the usual width of polyethylene sleeves is 150 cm, while steel sheets or coils are usually 100 or 125 cm wide, and we must make an effort to search for the steel in the sleeve of equal width if we don't want to spend our time cutting steel sheets. This is my measurement of the energy parameters of my solar heater, and one of my old videos described how these energy parameters are used to predict the thermal capacity of a solar heater and its heat production. This parameter corresponds to light wind, and increasing its speed increases this parameter. My calculations for heat production of the solar heater use these degraded parameters which take into account the impact of dirt, aging of the heater and other causes.
It is important to note that this parameter is several percent less than the efficiency of my old solar heater, and now I will describe several causes which reduce the efficiency of the new solar heater. Now cold water circulates through my heater, and here we see the temperature of the surface of the black steel sheet. So, the temperature of the sheet in the center of the heater is noticeably higher than at the edges of the sheet. I think that these facts speak of poor heat transfer from the center of the sheet to the water due to low water circulation rate, air bubbles or other causes, and we understand that a higher temperature of the central part of the sheet leads to an increase in heat loss to the ambient air, and it reduces the efficiency of the heater. If we find and eliminate the causes of this phenomenon, the heater efficiency may increase by a few percent. In addition, we see that the edge of the steel sheet is covered with these black films under the influence of the weight of the water, and therefore these few centimeters of the sheet edge are not involved in the heat production. This is an important argument to change the design of such walls. Moreover, around noon, the south wall gives this shadow which further reduces the efficiency of our solar heater. This is the first position of our solar heater when this water outlet is located on its southern wall, and this pump takes water from the outlet and transfers it to the water inlet of the heater. This is the inlet, and we see the end of that hose. The hose end is fixed by several staples here. I remind you that this batten is perfectly horizontal, and this southern wall of the heater is located a few centimeters lower than its north wall, and this first position is interesting if we want to use a heat exchanger which will be here for taking the heat from the warm water of our heater. This is the second position of our solar heater when the water outlet is located on its northern wall which is higher than the southern wall. Now this hose gives a flow of water which is heated by the steel sheet. And here we see how this water flow leaves the solar heater through the outlet. This second position is the same as using my old solar heater according to these schemes which were described in this of my old videos. I remind you that this northern wall of both positions of the heater is located higher than its southern wall and these films must be well stretched. Otherwise, a wrinkle of the films here can cause a large air bubble here. That stretch of the films is important for both walls of this third position of the solar heater. We see that this is the deepest zone of the third position of our solar heater, and air bubbles can leave the heater both in this direction and here. The south is in this direction. And this water outlet can be located both on the eastern wall and on the western, and the third position can be used according to the same schemes as the second position. I installed this gray duct tape on one of the edges of steel sheet in so far as I was afraid that the steel edge could damage the polymer sleeve. Unfortunately, this third position cannot be operated during frosts because we cannot remove water from the heater. However we can automatically remove water from the first position through this outlet according to these well-known schemes drain back. But these wooden parts must be absent so that the bottom of the solar heater is flat. The second position can also be operated during frosts if such outlet is installed not only on the northern wall, but also on the southern. Now I am showing my water outlet where the polymer film is located between two rubber gaskets. But it is obvious that here we must add a wide washer. However it seems to me that this is a more reliable design of the outlet where the nut is located here. 